Um, next speaker is um, Dr. Goldmine with um, the PRB. So. Thank you. So now that you've heard about nanoparticles and membranes, I'm going to take you back in time to once upon a time we had legumes. And what I'm interested in doing is looking at this technology from a new perspective so we can actually see what we can do with what is being used today and that is just a simple legume. So the question is how can we use lagoons to improve the quality of the water treatment? What can be done with what we have today? Can we retrofit it somehow? Can we improve it somehow? And how can we achieve that in a cost-effective way? So that's really the presentation that I'm going to talk about today. So we have over 7,000 lagoon systems right now in the US. And, and they're being used for both municipal as well as industrial water treatment. A lot of the uh, companies here today uh, use lagoons for water treatment. And we know today that the nitrogen removal in lagoons is very limited. Uh, you know, basically, we look at the basic lagoon, it has a very limited capability to remove nitrogen um, in this case. And, um, and we know that ammonia and nitrate are basically pollutants that have to be treated somehow. And we're not talking about high concentration of nutrients, we're talking of low concentration. So if there's any recovery that has been done. So in other words, if you're talking about digestate, we are talking about recovering the NNP, and now we still have 10%, 20%, 30%, depending on what you're doing, will end up in the lagoon. So we're talking about the removal of that last amount of NNP that otherwise would impair the ecosystem. If you spray it on the field and do whatever, the nitrates we know would be problematic. So all of this stuff has to be taken care of. We're talking about low concentration. Lagoons are not meant to treat high concentrations of anything. They were not designed for that. They're designed to do the, the last trace amounts. And, and we are, we've done the recovery, we've done everything else before in this case. So the question is that in a, in a facultative lagoon, uh, basically we know there is going to be stripping of the ammonia. We know that depending on pH. Uh, at neutral pH, about half of the nitrogen is going to be in ammonia form. So it's going to strip out, basically. And uh, we're going to have some algal biomass assimilation. And we're going to get some nitrification to some extent. So the question is, we know there are mechanisms right now that will remove nitrogen, but they don't really do a very good job. And, and that's what we want to improve uh, somehow in this case. <coughs> so this is basically the chemistry of the ammonia. As the pH goes up, uh, pretty much at about, uh, in this, at this pH of 8.5, 50% is ammonium and 50% is ammonium. You can only strip out ammonia. You can't strip out ammonium, obviously. So you have to somehow make it ammonia to, make, to be able to strip it out. And in, in this case, we've got to make it neutral somehow. And that is done with the higher pH value. As the pH goes up, you, ammonium comes down, ammonia goes up. And at, this, at about this pH, 9.5 or 10, you can get rid of this neutral ammonia now. Once it is in a neutral form, it can be removed. And then there are systems, you know, basically we have membrane systems, we talked about we talked about stripping and all that. All that is around, but now we're com coming down to what happens in the lagoon once you have reduced the concentration, then what is the fate? So basically, we have models that have been developed in the past. I mean, there are papers written on how nitrogen gets removed in the lagoons. Uh, we have equations and so forth. I won't go through a lot of equations, but there's been a lot of work done on what the lagoon can do under a facultative condition. But the end result of this analysis was that the capability of the lagoon to remove nitrogen is limited. And this is mainly because it does not really have a very high um, condition to provide oxygen. And if you have to convert ammonia to nitrate, you need three moles of oxygen for every mole of nitrogen, and that's a lot of oxygen. And, and we cannot get the oxygen facultatively. There's no way the diffusion alone can put this oxygen, no matter how big the lagoon is. So this is where the problem is. And we know that in these lagoons that we have today, we are accumulating sludge at the bottom. I mean, all the lagoons that I've seen, there's four or five feet of sludge at the bottom. And that's going to impair the performance of the lagoon. In fact, the sludge will make its own ammonia. When you, when you decompose biomass under anoxic condition, it makes ammonia. 
So you actually generate ammonia over time. So any lagoon that has five feet of sludge is going to be an ammonia producer. And so your effluent ammonia is going to be higher than the influent in this case. And that's basically the problem. The lagoon is not solving anything. It's creating a problem because you've allowed the sludge to accumulate. In this case, the sludge accumulation in a lagoon is, is a big problem in this case. And if you dredge it, which you will have to do, it's very expensive. So dredging is not a good solution. It generates a lot of waste material. You have to uh, basically dewater it and get rid of it and all that. It's not a good solution. So we have to find a way of getting rid of these problems using technology with what we have today. And that's what I'm going to talk about here. So this is basically one of the technologies that we have developed, which is essentially a biomedia. So this is an open cell structure. This is a, basically a foam structure that has been developed with a float on top, and there's a weight at the bottom. And this is a waving biomedia. And so you know, you have, you've heard about biomedia. There's the moving biomedia that moves around. This is the waving biomedia. It only stands there and waves at you. And essentially, it is weighted at the bottom. It has a very high surface area, about 200 square feet per cubic feet, because of the open cell structure. It has a coating on the surface to allow the biofilm to form um, on the surface of this uh, so-called foam material we've got. And the float on top basically makes it stand up like this in water. And it just waves around. It's weighted down. It doesn't have to be attached to the bottom. And we throw them into the lagoons in a given way so they're staggered. And as the water flows through the lagoon, it basically goes through this biomedia. And, and the biomass grows on this media. This biomedia is, is there forever. Basically, you don't remove it. And as the water flows slowly across the lagoon with this biomedia, and the biomedia is not in the entire lagoon. It's only in a small section of the lagoon. So as the water flows across the biomedia, it is able to get treated to a much, much greater extent. Why? Because we get some benefits from putting this structure inside the water. Number one, we have a lot of surface area. So we can increase the concentration of active biomass in the form of a biofilm by a factor of about 600%. I mean, typically, the biomass concentration in a lagoon is about 200 milligrams a liter. Uh, if you look at a factory of lagoon, it's even smaller than that. Here, you can increase the concentration to about 14,000 milligrams a liter because you've got this biofilm now that is growing on this media that is standing in the water. So you increase the concentration of active biomass by 600%. So now you have a much more active zone for treatment of soluble BOD. That's the first thing you want to achieve in the lagoon, is get rid of the BOD in this case. The, the biological oxygen demand of the water has to be treated. There's organic load coming in. You've got to treat that load somehow. The other advantage we have with this media is that because it is weighted down, it can be put into any lagoon. It is not really tied down. If you want to ever remove it, you can just lift it up. And you can dredge it if you want. So in other words, it does not impair uh, the structure of the lagoon does not allow anything to be put in there. You don't have to put in pipes and that kind of stuff. It, it's just weighted down. It just stands there and waves around, and as the water flows, and they're staggered, so there's a row of these, and there's another row of that, and so forth. There may be four or five rows of these, and the water just flows right across these rows. And as it does, you are able to treat BOD uh, in this case. But the main reason why we put these into lagoons um, is because of the, and we can provide some aeration in this case. So this is a very simple schematic. This is your uh, biomedia now. This is the lagoon, for example, the sludge is sitting at the bottom. And you can provide some air to provide oxygen, dissolved oxygen in this case. And as this oxygen provides the decomposition, in the aerobic decomposition of the sludge, the, uh, the, uh, the treatment of the BOD, and what happens over time is that the sludge layer begins to go down. You are now treating the sludge, basically, over time. And any ammonia that is, being, that is in the water, you're treating that water as well. So by using this technology, the simple technology <coughs> of increasing surface area, we can basically maintain the depth of the sludge below a certain depth. If, as long as the depth of the sludge is below two feet, you don't need dredging. You're not going to create these uh, BFAs. You're not going to create the fatty acids. You're not going to create the ammonia because you don't have the anoxic condition anymore. So basically, the idea is that you're going to have some sludge. The inorganic stuff, the, the phosphorus, is all going to be sitting down. 
and that's what you want. You don't want the organic part, you don't want the five feet of biomass that otherwise is going to build up. You're going to basically oxidize the biomass effectively in this case over time. So this is the other thing that we find in this media. So this is the outer surface of that media, and this is the aerobic region. There is oxygen, dissolved oxygen outside, so this is where the BOD goes. But if you look at the oxygen profile, if you go inside the media, the oxygen is getting consumed. And now this is the anoxic section of the media now. And this is where the denitrification occurs. So you have the nitrifiers lodged here, you have the denitrifiers on the inside, the water is flowing across this media, and as it does it, you get a lot of retention of nitrifiers, and you have a lot of retention of denitrifiers. Now we know in a lagoon, in a suspended culture, you are unable to contain nitrifiers. If the temperature is low, the nitrifiers just basically are inactive, and you get no nitrification, and basically no denitrification at all in a lagoon, uh, in this case. So what this does, essentially, it not only increases the concentration of biomass to remove the soluble BOD, it also retains the nitrifiers and the denitrifiers. It provides a housing for this population that otherwise does not grow very fast. And in the winter time, it is not, it's not very active. But in this case, it remains active even under cold conditions. So you're able to nitrify, denitrify, and deal with this nitrogen that otherwise would end up at the end as either a nitrate or as an ammonia, and then you cannot spray irrigate the water. So, so this is basically a waving biomedia that increases the sludge retention time. And now because the biomass is growing here, this biomass that is growing in the outside region has an infinite retention time. You're basically not gonna, you're not gonna have the biomass flow and basically settle down you're going to retain the biomass now. And as the biomass is retained indefinitely, it decays down. And so your sludge growth now is going to diminish. Your retention time is infinite, so you're not going to have any sludge accumulation now. You're going to basically operate with a condition where the biomass is being retained. It has infinite sludge retention time, more or less. So it decays down, and it basically converts itself under aerobic conditions, which is what you want. You don't want accumulation of sludge. So this basically, we believe, is a, is a system that improved this old, age old technology of lagoons, the existing technology of lagoons, by putting these media in there. You can improve the lagoon capacity, you can take out the sludge at the bottom over time. It might take two, three, five, two, three years, but after two or three years, the sludge layer will keep going down, and eventually you'll get to the very basic layer of inorganic stuff that will have to be dredged eventually but not every five, six years. And you're not going to make ammonia as a, as a pollutant now, in this case as well, because you don't have the anoxic condition that otherwise you would have, um, and which is what we have today. So this is the other uh, part of the story, is that we got to provide dissolved oxygen. The facultative method of getting oxygen in a lagoon is not very efficient. You don't get enough oxygen in there, we know that, because diffusion is not enough, and you need nitrogen <coughs> To, to burn off the nitrogen into nitrate, you need three moles of oxygen. So some kind of aeration has to be provided. Now aeration is a, is a very old technology. It's very inefficient. I don't know if anybody has looked at aeration, but when you aerate water, you make bubbles, they just rise up and they're gone in a few seconds, and you only transfer about six to eight percent of oxygen into the water. So you compress all this air, and then you bubble it through the water, and then it's all gone within a matter of few seconds and all you get is 6% transfer. So all this power consumption that we do in a water treatment device, in the water treatment system, is 85% of power consumption in an activated sludge is compression of air. And all of it just goes up and is gone. Basically, 6% is all you get. So we want to improve aeration, basically, because we want, in a, in a lagoon, you want the oxygen somehow, right? So this is what we're gonna do. So we have, we have developed this, um, this is what is called an absorption aerator. This is basically a venturi system. So as the water flows through this, it entrains the air, and we know that venturi will do that. But now we spin this liquid and air uh, composition here, and when we spin it, we get what we call micro bubbles. So it creates what is called white water. Essentially, when water goes through this thing, it pulls in the air, 
So there's only one pump pumping, there's no blower now. We've got rid of the blower. We basically have a liquid pump sitting outside. It takes the water from the lagoon, it aerates, it uh, aspirates the air. We spin at this thing, we get micro bubbles, and they go back in the lagoon. So what are micro bubbles? So micro bubbles basically are bubbles that are less than 50 microns. When you have bigger than 50 micron bubbles, they just rise up because of buoyancy. But when you decrease the diameter of the bubble, so this is the plot that shows the diameter of the bubble, you have 300 microns or bigger, the time it spends, this is the time it takes to rise through five feet of water. So if you have a bubble which is bigger than 300 microns, it's gone in a few seconds. But when you go below 50 microns, the buoyancy of the bubble is being canceled by the weight. And now the bubble stays in the water forever. And that's what we call white water. So basically when you create micro bubbles less than 50 microns, they will stay in the water forever. They will never rise up because there's no buoyancy now. The buoyancy and the weight have canceled. And now this bubble will just keep sitting around, basically dissolving oxygen. So by using this micro bubble concept, we can increase the oxygen level in the water to a huge extent by just simply letting the bubbles stay in the water forever. And as the water flows across the lagoon, this white water basically permeates all the way down. So you can basically oxygenate a huge amount of water with a little bit of energy. The only energy we're doing is putting the pump there. And the pump is sitting outside. There's nothing inside the lagoon. So all we're doing is the pump is sitting outside, the water is sucked up from the lagoon, it is recycled back with air, and the micro bubbles are injected through nozzles, and the nozzles are basically uh, <coughs> holes in the pipe. So there's no nozzle actually, it's just holes in the pipe. It just injects this white water back into the lagoon. And by doing this, the, you oxygenate the entire depth of the lagoon in the process, and you're able to get, so you can see the efficiency of oxygen transfer is about two to three times any bubble aeration because of this nature of the micro bubbles that we have created. All right, so this is an example of an application that we have done where we have the lagoon water coming in. It goes through these back holes and comes out here. This is the lagoon that had 50% sludge. Basically, the capacity had gone down to 50%. They had five feet of sludge, five feet of water, and that was the lagoon condition. So in this case, we basically put this pipe in there on the top surface, uh, basically with these holes in there, and we're injecting the, uh, the water is basically taken from the lagoon, and it is uh, from this outlet here, pumped with the absorption aerator, the ambient air is sucked in, and then the white water is injected. You can see that it's going against the flow, so it's injected, and this is where the waving biomedia is put in there. So we have rows of these, as you can see the rows of waving biomedia right here, rows right here, and rows right there, and the water is just going like this through the lagoon. So by putting this in the existing lagoon, we are able to oxygenate the entire lagoon. We are able to take out the sludge layer over time. And essentially, we are able to treat the nitrogen, the ammonia and the nitrate, denitrification as in this case, because of the waving biomedia sitting in the water, which is now growing the nitrifiers, the denitrifiers. So we have taken an existing lagoon system that was at only 50% capacity, was not meeting the TKN limits. And now by putting this media into the water, just throwing it in the water in a staggered way, and putting this external system right here, which is the pump and the absorption aerator, and then basically this pipe with holes in it so that the, the white water can come out. So we are basically causing mixing. We are putting in oxygen, the micro bubbles, and we are providing the media in this case. We can retrofit any lagoon with this technology very easily and by doing this now we are providing everything we need to make this operate as a water treatment device much much more efficiently than it was that could ever do before. So we can take existing lagoons and basically make them effective in dealing with the nitrogen, the TKN, the BOD and improve the quality of the water without really having any process at the back end in order to meet those limits. And that's the whole idea. The whole idea is that it is very expensive to run an activated sludge. It's not cheap to run an activated sludge. What we are doing here is we're making the lagoon become closer and closer to an activated sludge process, kind of activated sludge, 
where we have the media, we have the biomass concentration, 16,000 milligrams a liter, which you can never achieve otherwise. We have the nitrifiers, we have the denitrifiers, they don't wash out now. And we have the aeration, which is now providing the dissolved oxygen at the same time. So it converts this into a very effective device over time. So this is a simulation package that we have developed that allows us to put the dimensions of the lagoon and all the dimension, all the information about the existing lagoons. And we are able to calculate how much biomedia we need to remove the TKN and remove the BOD and meet the limits and so on and so on, given a volume, given the residence time, given the analysis. We have all the equations in this program. It does all the calculations about the oxygen transfer and all that stuff. So I won't go through all the details, but you can see that it basically takes all this information, you put in the required the removal of the nitrogen and the BOD and so on and so on, and it essentially then goes through the analysis and then predicts what the area of the biomedia would be, what the conditions would be, and so on and so on. And I won't go through all these numbers, but I can send you all the details in this case. And basically it comes out with a number saying, you need so many pieces of biomedia, and you need so much flow in order to put the oxygen in there, and this is the, the waving biomedia we're talking about in this case. And this is how we calculate how much biomedia we need to get 92% or 95% of BOD or TKN removal in an, in an existing lagoon, which was only doing 30% or 15%. So this is how we can improve this technology quite well to meet the limits of TKN and BOD um, in, in time. So in conclusion, uh, basically we are um, taking existing lagoons and by using the waving biomedia and the microbubble aeration, we're able to improve the nitrogen capacity, the removal of the lagoon uh, efficiently so we can meet the effluent limits for spray irrigation at the end of the process. And the microbubble aeration is able to improve the oxygen transfer and we have a program that allows us to calculate the amount of biomedia and how it performs under a given situation. Thank you very much.